Hey everybody, this is Perch. This is mostly not a video about comics. I want to put that up, up front. This is a finance video, which will get fewer hits. But, uh, you know, maybe if I do a really catchy thumbnail that says things like, uh, Woke Agenda! Fuck SJW! Then maybe then we'll get some attention and people will, re will regurgitate it and like, Disney failing! Kathleen Kennedy about to be fired. I don't, I don't know. But, um... I want to throw this out there as some information. For, so for those like 15 of you that are still here after that introduction, let me explain what this video is about. So there's been some quite, with the, when the Batwoman movie was canceled, there were a bunch of articles, and this kind of shows the dumbing down of America. And it kind of saddens me a little bit because you, if, if by the way, I'm going to cross over into a bunch of different videos here. If you listen to the Mark Miller interview, one of the things he mentioned was that we're entering the end of the America era and we're going to the uh, start of the China era. And I, I completely agree, by the way. It's depressing for me, uh, somebody who's traveled all over the world. I've lived in uh, almost every continent. Lived. Uh, not, I've, I've, I've not lived in Antarctica, obviously. I've not lived in uh, Africa, but I've visited plenty. So, uh, But I've lived all over the world, and, and America has a lot of cool things going for it. I'm not a, like... You know, I'm not a, uh, you know, flag-thumping American, but I still believe in this system, capitalism, and everything else. And I think it's a pretty damn good system. The sadness that I have right now is that the, uh, the American system is about to be displaced by China. I think it is inevitable at this point. We've, we passed the Rubicon. We passed the line of no return. And we're definitely headed toward that era. So, by the way, if you're a savvy investor, I don't know why you'd be listening to a fucking comics channel. But, you know, hey, if you are, and you have some money in banks, you know, start looking at international funds, look at things that are going to protect yourself, because the reality is, you know, you got places like, like China that is owning a lot of the technology. They're about to take over the semiconductor uh, effort. Um, start being smarter, meaning don't take your news, facts, investment advice from people like CNN or Fox News. Those people are, are out to serve themselves and start looking at places that are going to serve you better. The reality is, the world dynamics are about to change. So put your money in places to protect you and your child, your children uh, that are going to be protected from this global wipeout that is, that is coming. Uh, sorry for being grim. But uh, in this uh, Batgirl, sorry, not that one, Batgirl movie cancellation, I've noticed an interesting trend in a lot of the articles that are written about it. What's fascinating to me is nobody, and I mean nobody, is saying the incredibly obvious and the the way if you if you if you work for a real company, meaning not Jezebel or IGN or any of the or bleeding cool or any of these dumb idiot companies filled with dumb idiot people, um, you you know this term. So if you've ever worked in a company that that is business minded or you're in that space, you've heard the term "throw good money after bad." Have you heard that term? Let me explain what that means. It basically means if you have a bad investment. And by the way, nobody invests in things from the very beginning going, I know this is going to be bad, but I'm going to put money into it anyway. Nobody does that. And that's the big fallacy, by the way, of all the uh, SJWs, woke, ruining the country. That's the, that's the flaw in that argument, is it assumes that people are willing to throw good money, meaning money they have, after stupid as shit investments just because of woke reasons. That is dumb. The people who are telling you that are fleecing you out of your cash. And yes, that includes several big name YouTubers who do it every single day because it gets lots of hits, lots of attention, and they're taking your money to do it. But they have no interest in actually providing any kind of level truth. And the reality is most of these people have no fucking business sense whatsoever. And you know exactly who I'm talking about. Anyway, throwing good money after bad means you recognize that it's a bad investment. You went into it. You had good intentions, you thought things were going great, but then you realize it's a bad investment. Classic case, an old person's case. Hey, you're invested into Kodak. Of course you're invested into Kodak. Kodak is a, is a film company. They've got an amazing business model where they sell film, and then they get a cut when the film gets taken into a store, and then the film gets developed, and they put these photos in a little envelope, and you take it home. They're getting money in two sides. It's a great business investment. But then along comes digital photography, and Kodak laughed their asses off at this. They're like, no, nobody's going to, look, our photos are super cool, and they're clear, and you get to hold it in your hand like a print, and everything's really great. And, and who doesn't love 
taking a bunch of photos and then take and then being really careful to take the little capsule out of the camera because if you take it out wrong then it's going to fuck up the entire film and then you put it in an envelope so like in a Costco or a Target or a Walgreens or something and then you wait like a week and you get it back and then you have your photos and you realize that in like 50% of the photos are it's blurry out of focus or somebody has their eyes shut everybody loves that shit yeah you know but of course nobody loved that shit Everybody hated that. We've all, I mean, if you're old enough, you've all been on vacation, you've taken a bunch of photos, and you're like, wow, a bunch of this stuff is garbage. That's, that's what you see when you open up the envelope. And so at some point, digital photography came along, and the iPhone came along, and the iPhone has a camera in it. And I remember, I, I know this firsthand, Kodak, like, nobody's going to trust a phone photo that's ridiculous the quality is lower it's a lower resolution nobody's going to take that it's like yeah except they get to sit there and they get instant results of their photos instantly so therefore it's going to be better even though it was lower quality it's going to be better and because everybody went to it everybody was like well even though it's lower, lower quality i'm going to pay for it i'm going to invest in it. i'm going to stop investing in stupid take the camera roll to the you know photo mat and do that kind of shit, everybody went for digital. Of course they went for digital. You dumb assholes, of course they did that. They, they did it because it made sense. So then what happened was the technology behind digital photography got better and better and better because that's where all the money shifted. By the way, this is the exact reason why comic book digital products are are uh, it, the, the lack of, of U.S. Jesus Christ! Can anybody in Texas afford a fucking muffler? What the fuck is going on? I don't know if you can hear that in the background, but it drives me insane. Come on, you you dumb piece of shit! If you can afford a giant ass truck with huge tr new wheels and a bumper sticker that says "Take my gun over my dead body," then you can afford a goddamn muffler, you dumb asshole. Anyway, so the point here is when you get to comics, if you have digital as a technology. You, nothing is going to happen unless you invest in that technology. If you invest in it, it's going to get better. It's going to get more readable. Things will work out. But if you continue to, to pause, all that's going to mean is that Japan and other countries like China are going to eat your lunch because they are properly investing in this kind of crap to make the business work. That's how the business world works. So, by the way, when we get to Batgirl, what does this have to do with that? Well, people have been asking me, it's like, well... You know, they put $90 million. First of all, it's unclear if it's $50 million, $70 million, or $90 million. Nobody's really sure. But here's a general rule of thumb if you're talking about business. The lowest number wins. If somebody, everybody goddamn exaggerates in this business. So if the answer is, we can't tell if it's $50 million or $90 million, I got news for you. It's $50 million. Absolutely. Every fucking time, it's $50 million. Talk to, you know, talk to somebody who's, who's done tons of investment. It's always the lower number. Okay? So the question mark people have is, well, if they spent $50 million, why didn't they go ahead and release the film? Well, because to release the film, they would need another 5 to $10 million. At, at least, if it, depending on where the film is in pre-production, you would need more. You would need $20 million, $30 million. And thus is the explanation of the expression, throw good money after bad. So what that literally means is you've made a bad investment. You've invested bad money into something. It's a waste. It's you're, you're getting a tax right off at that point. Any additional dollar you spend is good dollars that you are throwing down a, a trash bin into bad. So people are like, wow, is David Zasloff against woke content? Is he striking a blow for Trump fans everywhere? No. He's literally a businessman who goes, I spent $50 million on this piece of shit property that is testing badly. The movie sucks. It's awful. I'm never going to see a dime of return on that. And you're saying we need another $20 million. And your logic is, well, we've spent, 20 mil we spent $50 million. We might as well spend another twenty to, uh, you know, to finish it off. I don't know about you, the person listening to this right now. Would you like $20 million? I'll, I'll tell you right now, that's a big fucking lot of money, and I'll bet a lot of you could retire on that money. I'll bet a lot of you could retire on a quarter of that money. Like, if I walked up to you right now and said, here's $5 million, you won't be able to work again 
a single day for the rest of your life. Could you do it? By the way, a lot of people would say they could do it and then realize later they cannot do it. It's one of those fascinating things. I'm, I'm reading all these articles about millennials and like, well, if I have, uh, if I cross $1 million of net worth, then I can retire and I won't have to work another day in my life. I, I got news for you. If you have $1 million in net worth, you will not be able to retire and, and not work another day in your life. That money will get eaten up in a hurry. By the way, net worth does not mean full worth. It means you've got investments. It means like you have a house that's worth $600,000. Can you sell the house for $600,000? Nobody knows. But even if you do sell it for $600,000, you've got to buy another house because you've got to live somewhere. I'm not assuming you're not living on the street. But that is what money is like. And that's why so many of these comments are, are stupid. Absolutely fucking stupid. I, I, it drives me insane where people are like, well, you know, hey, this crowdfunding comic made $2 million. This person is set for life. Yeah, except, except there is, uh, there's, you, you have no idea what your costs are going to be. You're, you're not getting $2 million. You're getting $2 million minus your printing costs, your shipping costs, you're paying everybody else costs. You're not making $2 million. Let's stop with that garbage. People are like, all right, I'm like, look, these uh, crowdfunding people are making more money than Marvel. Yeah, once you subtract expenses, call me again. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. Some are, the really rich ones are, some are not. Yeah, I mean, this is all done. Anyway, regardless of all that, look, the reason why Batgirl, the movie, is not trying to invest another, uh, you know, why they're canceling this film is no giant rocket science to anyone. Which is why all these articles you read from Variety, Hollywood Reporter, all these other dumb assholes, they never state the freaking obvious, which is you don't throw good money after bad. The movie was failing. It tested poorly. Anyone with any ounce of sanity knows it's not going to do well. They know. So why in the holy hell would you go into that and say, well, I mean, we've already spent $70 million, so we might as well spend another $10. That, that's That's... That's that's retard thinking, and I understand. I there's some jackass on Twitter who listens to my videos every single time. Whenever I say the movie, whenever I say the word retard, the guy like copies Ron Mars and like half a dozen other creators. Like that perch guy is saying ableist language. Ah, fuck off! Seriously, what are you even talking about? Anyway, um, there you go. That's my little rant of the day. Look. Throw good money after bad. It's a good expression. And by the way, if you absorb this in your life, you will do better. You might say, hey, I'm not a Hollywood film producer spending $70 million on a film. Yeah, probably not. But this logic will help you out in your life. If, for example, you have a, uh, I, I, I don't know what the hell you have. You have a TV system, a stereo, a, I don't know. And it's starting to fail. And your stereo costs you like $200. Right, it's a nice. I don't know what it has. It's got a connection to Google Play and all these other kind of online services, but it's starting to fail. And you take it to Best Buy because you're whatever you 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 just want to throw your money away to the Geek Squad, and they tell you, "Yeah, it will cost you like fifty dollars to fix this two hundred dollar stereo thing that you've got here, this sound bar, whatever it is." You have to ask yourself, "Do I really want to take my two hundred dollar investment?" and throw another $50 on top of it to get it fixed, when the reality is it's probably going to die again in a year, and I could just take $100 and buy something new. Your, your argument is probably going to be, well, I can spend $50 now and get it working, or I spend $100 later. You spend the $100. If you can afford it, you spend the $100. You spend it because you're throwing good money away. You're throwing good money after bad. That's fundamentally what that means. Your, your investment at that point, your stereo, is old and shitty. It's bad. Throwing good money after it makes no sense whatsoever. Unless you have no choice, you never take that route. Because all you're doing is you're digging yourself into a hole. This, by the way, is what they should teach you in a basic civics class in or economics class in high school. Not civics. What am I talking about? Economics class. Because this is how you manage your money. I'll take an even more extreme example to get some people to comment weird in the, in the comments. If you, like, like, I'm a parent of two girls. Fortunately, and I'm very blessed, my two girls are very smart. I feel very confident they're going to be able to figure out their way. All I need to do is make sure they don't you know, wander into using meth down here in Texas because it's everywhere, and, and they'll be fine. 
But let's say you have two kids that are dumb. Let's say you've got one intelligent kid and one that's like, you know, still eats paste. And the kid's like 13 and they're, 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 they, they eat glue because that's their habit. Here's the thing. Start setting your kid up, the dumb one, into like a good trade school. Give them, give them something where they can achieve in life. Do not give them $180,000 to go to Harvard. That would be stupid. They're, they're never, they're never going to be happy there. It's never going to be successful there. So go the easy route. Or so the Germans would have us believe. <laughs>